Hope you got your coffee with you today. Get your cup of coffee. Get the day started. Get a Bible. But get ready for the Middle East. Because there's some stuff happening there that you can, you can see it being telegraphed a mile away. I'm Paul Begley. Are you serious? Yes, there's trouble, there's trials, there's tornadoes, there's persecution, there's riots, there's uprising, and there's a double earthquake in Japan. 7.1 literally shook buildings in Tokyo. And again, power lost to the Fukudomi nuclear power plant. It's, there's no power now to reactors one, two, and three. They had to evacuate all the employees. They have to push the evacuation mileage around the plant because you want to why? Because because the the radiation is deadly. It's deadly and it's deadly. Let's go quickly right now to uh, uh, to the Associated Press. Let's go to the news. And let's see what's going on. I just got to catch this up for you. Well, the Ivory Coast former president, Cabo, has finally got to go. And that's right. And the reason is he's finally been arrested. Now, the guy had an opportunity. They put down a peace plan for him, an opportunity for him to leave the country. He lost the election. He lost the election. The guy lost the election, and he refused to surrender power. I'm going to tell you why. These Muslim monarchies, they don't like, they don't believe in democracy. They, they play like they do. They have these fake elections. And then when the people say, look, we're sick of you, they don't want to give power up. And then they want to crack down on somebody. Well, this guy lost, and then he refused to get out of the way. He's tore the country up. They had to finally back him into a corner, fight with his military, the ones that were still around, and finally extract this dude out of his own house, had to pull him out of a bunker. <laughs> they don't get it. He could have he could have he could have bowed out, collected a few billion dollars, and went into exile somewhere, or even lived in his own country because he lost. He just you know. He, Ivory Coast incumbent leader Gabo has been arrested. A spokeswoman for forces loyal to his rival presidential um, new claimant and the winner, Ottawa. President Ottawa said on Monday, so he's in charge now. Okay, goodbye, Ivory Coast. Another Muslim marketing going down. We've had Tunisia. Now, Ivory Coast was really the first one because they had an election. But it took, what, six months to finally get the guy out of the way? Then Tunisia had an uprising and they overthrew their government but their president bowed out peaceably and they did a peaceable exchange of power after the unrest there in Tunisia after the vi after the protesting and some rioting he said that's enough let's not destroy their country and for that I give him credit I give him credit the rest of the Muslim world though will see him as weak they will see him as weak and then next was Egypt and it went for 15 days, and you folks watched it. You watched it. You saw how it came down. And finally, after 15 days, President Jose Mubarak, 30-year reign of a Muslim monarchy, he surrendered and turned it over to the rest of those. There's a council in charge, a five-general council. Omar Suleiman, who they chose to be the vice president, just quietly hid in a corner. And now the people are starting to protest. They want this council out. And they want their own leader. What they don't realize is the Muslim Brotherhood is positioning themselves to try to take power. And they've pulled in their buddies from the Hamas. Those murderers from Mecca. Those ministers of Mecca. Those murder mayhem. Their maliciousness. These guys are getting in position. And the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 19, the burden of Egypt. It says that Egypt would fail or fall, and a, and a council would take over. That council would fail, and a new king, he would be a fierce king, a cruel lord, would emerge in charge of Egypt. And we're seeing where it's coming from. It looks like it's going to be from the terrorist group Hamas. Now, after that ended with Egypt, then came Libya, and of course, Gaddafi. I'm going to tell you more about him in a minute. But let's go to Yemen, because in Yemen... The opposition that's rising up against their president, Saleh. It says Yemen's opposition to their president, Saleh. Uh, they rejected a Gulf Arab League 
initiative for President Ali Alalala Shalate to step down because it appears they're going to offer him immunity from prosecution while Saleh himself welcomed the deal. So you can see, do you see this? Look, the people are saying, no, we want him out, but we want him out and we want him prosecuted. This guy's a criminal. This guy's a corrupt to the core. This guy put killed some of our people. This guy murdered some of our people, our members. We want this guy brought to justice. We'd want, we don't just want him out of power. We want him held accountable for his sin. And see, uh, President Ali Alalala Shale, he's willing to take the deal. You know why? He's lost power. You sense weakness here? He's lost power. He sees he can't contain it. So he's thinking, I got to cut a deal. But they're not. He should have cut a deal early. But he refused. He went around. He murdered some of their folks, shot them in the head. He's coming out, though. He's leaving. He's leaving. He's got to go. Going to be bloody, but he's got to go. Oh, Japan. We're going to talk about Gaddafi in a minute, but you know about these earthquakes. 7.1 this morning, and the Japan's power plant has lost power. So those one, reactors, 1, 2, and 3, they're melting down. The radiation's in the air. It's in the water. It's in the land. It's in the food, the vegetables. It's in the cow's meat. The fish, meat, the fish, it's in the milk, it's in the baby food, it's in everything you eat, drink, and breathe in Japan. They keep having to extend the evacuation zone further and further and further. And now radiated fish is being sold in the markets in San Francisco. Fish that had radiation sold to Hong Kong, who turned around and sold it to merchants in San Francisco. And, they're <laughs> and some of it has been sold to major restaurants across the country. Coming to a restaurant near you. A drive-up window near you. How do you feel, America? And have you heard of the soaring prices of food that are on the rise? And what about the price of gas and energy? And the unemployment rate is still out of control? The taxation? The government can't get their act together? And when they went to pay the the soldiers, they, uh, the scare tactic by Obama's administration was to just give them half a check and force a vote for a continuation of the budget. And both sides are guilty of sin on this whole thing. There's politics going on. People don't care. They're using abortion. They're using the military families. They're using the elderly and Social Security. All of these threats. It's a bunch of corruption. It's corruption in America. So, Who's surprised by Muslim monarchies being corrupt? Who's surprised by any of these dictators being corrupt? If a democracy as stable and as strong as the United States of America has so much corruption in Washington that it's filthy, what makes you think that a Muslim monarchy is going to honor a deal that they cut with the people in Yemen? Uh, the people of Yemen know better than that, okay? Uh, some guy shot and killed a bunch of people in, in the Netherlands. He fired over a hundred shots. A hundred rounds of ammunition. <sighs> killed six shoppers. Why? What's wrong? with What kind of demons are running around in people today? What is the demonic spirit in people? It's demons. Murderous demons. Murder, murder, murder. Uh, oh, and what about President Assad in Syria? I thought this guy was just going to be an eye doctor. I thought this guy was peace-loving, had a glamorous wife. She goes shopping. Oh, they were, they're the heartbeat of Syria. Really? His whole agenda is to absolutely team up with Iran and fire a nuclear warhead into the heart of Jerusalem. This guy hates the Jews with a passion. His family has run Syria with a rod of iron for over four decades. His daddy put to death 80,000 Syrian people because he smelled opposition among him. Even this President Assad has put people to death, has been fighting, has been shooting, and now as these off the campus of Damascus, the Syrians 
Police have shot and killed some of the students there over the weekend. Assad, don't be, uh, don't be fooled by the uh, facade of Assad. Don't, don't let the facade of President Assad fool you. There's hatred. There's murder. There's mayhem. There's execution. There's jailing. There's imprisonment. There's ruling with a rod of iron. His family legacy and their billions of dollars and their lifestyle is on the line. And this guy will fight to the bitter end. And he's teaming up with Ahmadulajad. And he's teaming up with other Muslim monarchies and other Muslim leaders, uh, radical jihadists, who ultimately are fulfilling the Bible in Zechariah 14, when it says, All nations shall surround Israel. Don't forget something. When Egypt fell, when Mubarak fell, and the, and the council of five generals took over, with the blessing of the Muslim Brotherhood, with, within 30 days of it, they allowed Haq Madulajad to take two warships through the Suez Canal and park them in the Mediterranean Sea for the first time since 1979. Are you serious? Are you serious? Are you serious? And the world is asleep. The American mass media, they're a joke. They're literally a joke. I don't care if it's the Washington Post, the New York Times, MSNBC. What else is going on? Oh, I forgot to tell you this. Back to Syria. So Syria is, of course, friends with Iran, right? President Assad. The facade of Assad. And Ahmadullah And their ultimate purpose is to destroy Jerusalem. Because... President Ahmadulajad of Iran believes that if he can take the city of Jerusalem as and blow it up or just about destroy it, that the twelfth Imam will come because they believe that his control will come from chaos. What's amazing about this philosophy of Muhammad is it's the same thing the New World Order sees coming. This New World Order is trying to create their power from chaos, control from chaos. And they, we have the FEMA death camps in America. I mean, they're ready people. There's 800 of them. Prisons, nobody there. There's a cemetery in Arizona that's owned by the federal government. It's United States Cemetery. There's not one grave in it. It's big enough for a half a million people. What? Are you serious? Or as John D. Hart would say, are you kidding me? Are you serious? Yes. Yes, I'm serious. While you're worried about Snooky and the situation at Jersey Shore. While we're watching to see what La Lady Gaga is going to wear next. As we're inspired by the hairstyles of Justin Bieber. As we continue to wonder what's going to be on our guiding light. Or as the world turns. So are the days of our lives. The world's falling apart with massive earthquakes, radiation, disease, famine, pestilence, filthy water in the BP coastline of America. The food is greatly tainted. You know, I started the Daniel Fast by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I've lost 46 pounds doing it. My, I couldn't feel any better than I feel. I really couldn't. It's amazing. My blood pressure is getting just about back to normal. My cholesterol is beautiful now. My, I was a borderline diabetic. That has seemed to turn around. Um, I feel light on my feet. I have more energy. Um, and basically, the first chapter of Daniel tells you that the king of Babylon wanted to feed the children of Israel with the king's meat, the king's wine. And they were, they were to eat the king's. And Daniel said, we're not going to do that. That's, that's breaking the laws of our God. And anyway, it's not healthy for us. Give us 10 days to just eat the vegetables and drink the water. Let us do what God commands us to do. No meat, no sweets, no wine. Watch and see if we aren't sharper, smarter, 
brighter and stronger if our complexion ain't even better you give us 10 days the guy who was in charge of the feeding of course of the children of Israel he was kind of leery of this plan but he went along with it and after 10 days they stood before the king and the king was stunned these young men complexion was more fair than all the rest of the men he had selected for his apprentice program Donald Trump this was a true apprentice program and then they were smarter they were sharper they, they scored higher on their test score and so the king allowed them they were allowed to not eat the king's meat for three years apprenticeship and when the three years was over these Hebrew boys were ten times stronger ten times brighter Ten times smarter, ten times more, uh, had more wisdom than even the king. They, they were so impressive that the king of Babylon brought in his psychics, his wizards and his warlocks, his witches, his magicians, his soothsayers and his seance lovers and his stargazers. And he brought them in for their great wisdom and the riddles were brought before the king. And it was these Hebrew boys who had been on the Daniel fast who actually knew what God was trying to say. So I went into this um, in prayer and fasting and following it. 21 days without no meat, no sweets, and no bread, and no wine. 21 days of walking without the king's meat without the whatever it is they're putting in the food now whatever whatever what is it steroids human growth hormones well I don't know what else in it it beefs up these chickens breasts and make these cows bulky and I, what are they putting in the food maybe somebody knows maybe you can comment on this video what's going on in America how much greed is in Wall Street how much greed is in corporate America how much greed is in the government greed 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 Gaddafi's accepted a peace plan. <laughs> Muammar Gaddafi has accepted an Arab plan in the Gulf where he will cease fire upon his people. He'll quit murdering his people and he will remain in power. Are you serious, Gaddafi? Are you serious, Gaddafi? Are you serious? Gaddafi, there's a bullet waiting for you. I'm not, I don't, I'm sorry. It's waiting for you. You're going to go down. Worse than Cabo went down. Cabo in Ivory Coast was arrested. Gaddafi, you're going down. President Assad who's walking around with his glamorous wife and his uh, Amani suits in uh, Syria, his facade, he's going to go down. Syria will lose its leader. Libya will lose its leader. Tunisia has lost its leader. Egypt has lost its leader. The Ivory Coast has lost its leader. Yemen looks like gonna lose its leader what about Bahrain what about Algeria what about King Abdullah of Jordan people the Middle East is upside down the Bible says I'm gonna read you one prophecy get your Bible would you this is impromptu and everything I do is impromptu basically I'm led by the Holy Spirit but Luke 21, Jesus was told about the end of time. I read you some of it this morning on the earthquake. So let me pick up where I left off in verse 11. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilence and fearful sights and great signs. And there shall be from heaven. We've had that with those two suns setting over China, the super moons, the red moons, the blue moon, this new plant, Nerubo, that's coming 
And what about this star that exploded or whatever in the sky? And what about the constellations look like if the Big Dipper moved a little? But therefore all these, they shall lay their hands on you, this is to the church, and they shall persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. That's why I'm talking about the Daniel fast. I'm praying, I, I believe I have to get in condition and position to be able to walk in the Holy Spirit if brought before kings, if brought before leaders. And it shall turn to you, if they should turn to you for a testimony are you going to cry like a little baby? Or are you going to stand in the power of God? Come on, Christians. I'm talking to you. Don't think you're going to get out of this stuff. It's right here in the Bible. You're not going to get to get out of it. If you're alive when the tribulation period begins, believe me, you're going to live through it. You're either going to take the mark or you're not. And there's not a person on this planet that won't take the mark if they don't have God in their life. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you can't serve God now, what makes you think you can serve God when they're threatening to kill your babies? If you can't serve God as, and be a Christian in the land of plenty of America, what makes you think you can when the, when the Chinese government is in control of this nation and there's little brown soldiers, brown shirts, I call them brown shirts, running around in charge of the country and the Muslim high priests, the, the false prophets from the radical jihadists are going around these sheiks with Sharia law. If you can't serve the Lord now, what makes you think you can serve him then? Jesus said it this way, if you can't serve me in a green tree, what are you going to do in a dry? Oh, I know that's, I know that's hurting some of you because you, you, you're the padded pew Christian. The American church, if I said this, if I preach this message to the underground church in China, they understand because they're being persecuted, imprisoned, put to death. If I preach this message in uh, Uganda, where 275,000 Christians were hacked to death with machetes by Idi Amin back in 1973, and are still under persecution in Uganda, they would say, amen, preach it, brother. If I went and talked to my brothers and sisters in Christ in Cuba, who've been killed by Fidel Castro for their faith, their, their relatives, their friends, their Christian brothers would say, preach it, brother. Romania, Colombia, where do you want me to go? North Korea? You want to talk about that? No, I'm going to talk to the American padded pew Christian who has never at once even been made fun of for their faith, let alone striven under blood. They wouldn't know how to act if somebody actually said they couldn't be a Christian. And if they were, they was going to lose their job. They wouldn't know how to react. Because the padded pew Christian of America needs to really get filled with the Spirit of God. Okay, anyway, Gaddafi said he would uh, go along with the new peace plan that, that lets him be in charge. That's a joke. That is a joke. And the Arab League, to bring forth such a plan like that, you guys are a joke. Well, this is today's message. Uh, I want to hear from somebody because the Bible told us that we would have these uprests in the Middle East and these earthquakes and these and these diseases and these pestilence and these persecutions. So when I get all this hate mail from time to time, I really appreciate the people who stuck up and stood up for me and have really stepped up to the plate and have showed their appreciation. I really appreciate you. It's given me a newfound boldness. So that now when those angry atheists, those haters from hell, those jihadists, when they come after me, I just kind of got a new sense of <clears throat> power. And I think it's because of the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Are you saved? Are you saved? Hey, I'm going to say it this way. To you Christians who've been sitting on the padded pew and haven't got a clue, are you ready? Are you ready for the end times? Are you ready for the Madrid fault to, to completely have a, a 9.5 magnitude earthquake? And the entire city of St. Louis and the entire city of Memphis, Tennessee gets washed under and 4 million people are, don't have a home and 50,000 are dead and they don't have enough body bags to get them all. Are you ready? I'm Paul Begley. I guess I need to hear from you. 
If you're not saved, send me a personal message right now. I want to be saved. 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 I'll help you. We're going to get saved today. We're going to get saved today, and we're going to get on fire for God. And if there's Christians say, Brother Begley, you're right. I'm not where I need to be. I'm, whew. Come on. Let me hear from you. Go to my website. Catch up on some information at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's paulbegleyprophecy.com. God bless you. I want you to have a great day. I'm stirred in my spirit because of the importance of the hour.